one of the basic questions I ask for um, digestion histology is where are we in the GI tract? One of four places for the slides I've selected. Esophagus, small intestine. It's either going to be duodenum, jejunum, ileum. And there's different ways to tell where you are. For the duodenum, I want to have you look for those bruiser's glands. For the jejunum, I want you to look for those crypts of Lieberkuhn with the padded cells, or sometimes they just call them intestinal crypts. Crypts of Lieberkuhn. With the padded cells. The last one, the ileum, look for malt. Ilium has malt. There's the clues you can tell where part of the small intestine you're in. I also got, also got a lot of slides on stomach and colon. Now for the stomach, what you got to look for are the gastric glands and the gastric pits. Don't confuse those. Gland, pit, gland, pit. the colon. The colon has different things. You know, the one thing I want to emphasize on colon for the histology are the goblet cells in the uh, epithelium. Goblet cells. <clears throat> Any other thing I, I want you to know, I'll point out to you right now. Okay, so uh, first off, you're looking at a cross-sectional view of esophagus. That's what this is. That's where we are in the GI tract. And I have the labels showing us the different layers, the general structure, the general pattern of the GI tract wall. Number one, from here to here, mucosa. Number two, submucosa. Number three, circular layer, muscularis externa. Number four, the longitudinal layer of muscularis externa, number five, serosa or adventitia. Okay. There it is unlabeled, to help you study. Here it is, um, closer up view. So let me go back to the previous picture. We're going to zoom in right around here before esophagus. Esophagus, esophagus. This is all mucosa, broken down into number one, an epithelium. The epithelium, you got to know, it's a stratified squamous epithelium. That's number one. Number two is a connective tissue, lamina propria. Number three, muscularis mucosa. So one, two, and three are all mucosa of the esophagus. Here, you see a bit of submucosa. This is esophagus. Moving on from esophagus, there's different parts of the stomach. So these next slides are all stomach. This is stomach. That's where we are in the digestive tract. Going from outer to inner, starting with number one, serosa. This is all muscularis externa. Well, there are three layers in there, but I can't make them out, so don't worry about it. Number three. Submucosa, mucosa, number four. Okay. On this picture, you can see if it's a pit, call it gastric pit. Deeper in the mucosa, gastric gland. You see a little pink there? It's going to be muscularis mucosa. So I kind of point to it. MM, muscularis mucosa, gastric gland, gastric pit. Okay. Still stomach. And uh, I have it bracketed here. 
These three layers are the three layers of muscularis externum, longitudinal, circular, oblique. Okay, submucosa, mucosa. I could point to that, gastric pit. I could point in there, gastric gland. Identify the pit. Put a little deeper in there. The gland. Just pay attention to where it points to, and I don't think you'll miss it. Moving on from stomach to small intestine. This is the duodenum. So what do you expect to look for? Bruder's glands, boom, number six. Okay. They're within the submucosa. If number four is submucosa, number five is mucosa. So two and three are the layers of muscularis externa, so, uh, longitudinal layer, circular layer, number one, serosa or adventitia. This is the duodenum. Okay. Uh, this is jejunum. I'm looking only at the mucosa. This whole thing, number two is pointing to, is a villi, crypt. Okay. Well, specifically, it's that crypt of Libricum with the padded cells. The cells are eosinophilic. Um, if you take a closer up view, the, all these cells are eosinophilic, so these are the intestinal crypts with the padded cells. It's jejunum. Ilium, look for the mole. Do you see it? The big purple splotch, number four, is mole. This, that, 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 it's huge. It's all mole. So, out here are the two layers of muscularis externa, longitudinal, circular. This is all submucosa. This is mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue, mole. This little strip of smooth muscle here, number six is pointing to, muscularis mucosa. So number five, mucosa. This is ileum. Getting to colon. Okay, The colon has huge slabs of muscle here, okay, three and four. Circular longitudinal layers of muscularis externa. This is serosa adventitia. So from here to here, submucosa. So therefore, number one is mucosa. So notice the structure. Um, there's no villi here. It's these tight tubular glands. And I want to emphasize the, the goblet cells. But what do you think this is? Saw it before. Mall. So you got it here in the colon as well. Got a picture of that. Uh, again, you have longitudinal circular layers of muscularis externa. Therefore, what's this layer? Submucosa. Therefore, what's that little pink thing? Muscularis mucosa. This is the mucosa. If you look close up at these little glands here, they're filled with goblet cells. I'm pointing to one, but all of these clear things are goblet cells. The function of the goblet cell in the colon is very important for passing your bowels on a daily basis. Uh, there's one clinical story I heard about from a colleague. She used to be a nurse, and uh, she used to treat uh, her patient. She would go to his house. He, I forget what disease he had. He lost the function of his goblet cells, and he um, couldn't move his bowels. So he needed these massive enemas about once a month. So she was a nurse. She would go there. She would help him with it. This, this massive process, you had to like give them these large enemas. And, um, well, that wasn't the fascinating part of the story. The interesting part about his case is this guy, he managed to keep it a secret from his family for decades, his wife and kids. They didn't know that he could never go to the bathroom because he lost the function of his goblet cells. And my colleague, she used to like, she kind of laughed when she said it. She said that this guy would write him a check at his bedside, and she, so she would laugh. She's like, you know what this looks like, right? <laughs> she said, oh, she, so she always made him put RN, right? Uh, she's not a lady of the night. She's a, she's a nurse helping her. Because he kept it a secret from his family, so he, she didn't want his family, if they ever found out, to get the wrong impression. So um, well, anyways, I thought that was pretty remarkable that you could have this medical condition and you just keep it a secret from your family. For decades, so it emphasizes the importance of <coughs> goblet so cells. Remove the, uh, of yeah, I forget the cause. I have to look it up. The the They're one cell. They secrete mucus, so they help move the bowel. Yeah. So if you use the function of them, 
That is correct. So before you leave, I'm going to dismiss class, but I'm going to turn